This is a joke. Hello everyone, Jay, it's good to see you again. Welcome to episode 2 of our Aston Martin series. Coming straight off the back of a 7th and a 9th place finish. Should have been 7th and 8th, but uh, due to me not concentrating, we very nearly got a double DNF and Stroll kind of lost a place. But that's all behind us now. We've got a couple of races coming up. Every episode from now on will be more than one race. This is just so when this becomes a weekly series, we can just get through those seasons a little bit quicker. Uh, on another note, massive thank you to everyone who has been watching all the rest of the videos that we've been releasing on the channel with all the driver's ratings and those who have been tuning into the Jaguar custom team streams, especially the last stream because halfway through the early access we got word that a, tra a trailer, what am I about, a patch dropped and so we got the patch downloaded and we literally went through, if you look through episode 2 of the Jaguar stream, you will find me going through every single little bit of that patch making sure that all the issues we had with balancing driver development mentality and car parts is completely fixed and for the most part i think it is there's still a couple of things like driver's contracts and starting to create a team affiliates not going into the main driver's places if you choose an f1 driver for your creator team that's still a little bit iffy at the moment but i'm pretty sure within a week a couple of weeks that'll be more than fixed just there but anyway, straight on to this action. Let's uh, get ourselves over to Jeddah. If you haven't already, thumbs up the video and subscribe. And if you want to share, go for it. Check out the links in the video description below where you'll find the Discord, socials, and Twitch account as well as racing content contains other genres of game too. After this video, check out more racing and sports content on the channel and hopefully I'll see you in the comment section here and in other videos. Enjoy. We're going to start today with our pit crew training, set it to cumulative because then we can see with the race weekend how tired the pit crews are going to be. We cannot afford any more mistakes like in Bahrain. Absolutely unacceptable. So let's make those changes, make sure our pit crew are well rested. And hopefully this will be the last time I have to be annoyed at them. With Jeddah coming up and it being a mainly speed circuit, we may find ourselves struggling here, especially versus the RBs who have proven to be a little bit quicker this time around when it comes to straight lines. With that, we are going to set our race expectations a little bit lower. So we'll be losing a little bit of money, but it will keep the drivers motivated and happy. We completed practice without any drama, luckily. Still the case in F1 Manager 24 where there's quite a lot of other teams affiliates being used in free practice one. This early in the season, yeah, it shouldn't really be happening as much as it is, but it doesn't matter, it doesn't really affect my performance for now. Q1 was going as well as you would expect, however, at some point we got a red flag towards the end of the first session and little did I know that this was going to be a sign of things to come for the whole race weekend. As there was only two minutes left in the session, qualifying was cancelled and the results that were then stood. Q2 gave us a little bit of a shock though, Alonso falling short of the dotted this. red line, which it wasn't too far over it, so I think we can easily get Alonso back into the top 10 with some decent tactics and uh, some good old willpower. Isn't that right, Fernando? No? Okay, we'll, we'll see then. That's, that's fine. Stroll, however, seems to have up to the game. Lovely little top 8 just there, and with standard strats set with a bit less fuel, because we have a feeling there could be one or two incidents during this race. We are ready to set off. The anticipation is really building here. The fans in attendance are absolutely buzzing with excitement. And the cameras now shift to Sergio Perez, concentrating on the race ahead. A second place start for them today. They'll be aiming for a podium, but could they even sneak the win? And the time has come. Let's go racing. It's almost time for the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix. And 
it's lights out and away we go. A start without an instant. Nice. We'll absolutely take that, as well as some great driving and overtaking from both Alonso and this spectacular double that you're about to see from Lance Stroll as well. Yes, Lance Stroll with a spectacular double. And we yes. have both drivers safely into the top Good ten. Job. Good job. Car ahead, Leclerc. Yes, Lance. Yes, I did. We do still have with Alonso, though, a couple of Mercedes and an RB as well, trying their best to get by. While he's holding up, we have Stroll in front, trying their best to shake off Yuki, but Yuki's just managing to keep within that second, keeping that DRS going. And if we're not, if we're not too careful here, could potentially have both Aston Martins out of the top 10 by the time the first pit stops come. On lap 7 we actually make the call to swap over Lance and Alonso. Alonso I feel would be better suited with his experience trying to get past Yuki. But unfortunately a safety car ruins that before we can put the plan totally in motion. Sergeant ruins everything. After this, a massive rush into the pits with seemingly every single car going in to refresh their current tyres or change their strategies. We went with scrubbed softs for Alonso and fresh softs for Stroll. And I just had a feeling at this point that this race was going to throw us over plenty more surprises. We've got a pair of relatively clean pit stops which is good for a double stack and much better than what Bahrain showed us but after a quick shuffle of the leaderboard we found ourselves actually behind Perez but Stroll falling quite a few more places down in 12th. On the restart though Alonso absolutely blasting it dispatching Perez before shortly doing the same to Sonoda. The only challenge for Alonso now is can he push enough to get away and break that draft? On the softer compound, bloody well hope so. Or, or not, as the case may be. But little did I know that there was a big surprise waiting for me at the end of this straight. Enjoy, and don't worry, I did the crying for you. Oh, what what happened? Did did Alonso run Yuki off the track? Why has he gone to stroll? No. Oh, you are joking me. Joke. You're telling me. You're telling me. We've gone with hearts, anticipating a long run before we get plenty more instants before the end. More. The track is ready. And an amazing sequence coming up where somehow both the RBs felt like they uh, had to put free wide for Alonso. Free wide around Jeddah is an insane tactic just there. And unfortunately, with one of the very few cars which has decided to opt with a hard tyre, Perez and Joe are the only two cars around us doing the same. Everyone else is fighting for their lives on the softs. We do have a scary moment into turn two though, Ricardo gets a bit close to the wall, nearly takes out Hamilton but right on our back bumper. And just like that, way too early after the first one, another red flag. Who's the cause this time? 
Oh. Yo. Twenty one laps done. I think we're going to switch out of those hard tires and we're going to do a double set of mediums here. If we'd used mediums earlier, we would have set the hard until the end of the race, but the mediums, slightly quicker tire, and we only need to make one more pit stop. Same as most of the drivers on this race. Unfortunately though, it looks like we've got Yuki Tsunoda to battle with yet again. It doesn't take too long though, luckily. And by lap 28, we're finally, finally starting to get away from Yuki. We can start working on either trying to catch up the top six, or just keeping a seventh place and keeping away from eighth and beyond behind. You've but of flag. course, another red flag. This is... Call the race off. Just call the race off. We'll take the seventh. If only that had happened a couple of laps later, then we could have maybe got away with the softs. However, with a lot of mass involved, we decided just less than 20 laps to go. We could, realistically, make a new set of mediums with a little bit of pushing, last the rest of the way, and still be competitive to those behind us. We are going to get at least 7th place here, unless something goes drastically wrong. That is called foreshadowing. No instance into the first corner, but slightly worrying times as quite a lot of the cars around us, minus Norris, are on softs. Now, towards the end of the race, this does mean that we are going to be quicker than those on softs, but for now, it means I'm going to get an absolute onslaught behind me. And by the looks of it, it's just Perez, but... Don't rule out Sonoda, he, he has been very tricky these first two races so far. But if we can hold Perez off somehow and get even higher with a sixth, I'll be even happier with that. But then again, because of this battling, it does mean that we have lost all hope of keeping up with the top six, battling and keeping us out of the DRS zone. And in the end, it just turns into a mugging. Perez has far too much pace for us and we're left floundering about in 7th, hoping that Albon and Sonoda behind us don't suddenly work with each other and try and catch up to Alonso and potentially take some championship points from us. Approaching the last 10 laps of the race though, we find ourselves in a very comfortable 7th place, Sonoda nearly 5 seconds behind, Norris and everybody else uh, a little way in front, but if anything happens to those top 6 now, then we should be close enough to take advantage should they have to dash into the pits. But unfortunately, a very surprisingly uneventful rest of the race means that the top six carry on battling, but we get a very, very good seventh. Yeah, another seventh for Alonso. Well, Spenny does it again next and race as well. What happens when you drive with such skill and passion? They barely put a foot wrong. And that's another race done for Fernando Alonso. Seventh place at the end of that one, and some points for the team. Seventh place for Jeddah it is then, and still fourth in the constructors. Let's uh Crack on from this race weekend and get ourselves ready for Australia. On the upgrade front, we are ready with a couple of bits and pieces for Suzuka Japan. We've just got to get through Australia first. And of course, we've got to repair Dan Stroll's car after, you know, it's a stationary object. After the last race having a, just a little bit of an understatement when I say a couple of crashes in it, we're hopeful for a double points finish this time in Australia, but Melbourne has historically in F1 manager games been a bit of a crash fest in its own right, same with Canada as well. So let's hope we can avoid all that, put in some decent laps for qualifying and stay towards the top. Q2 looked like it was nailed on that we were going to get a surprise elimination here, but luckily Stroll right at the last second hit himself through, actually going quicker than Fernando at the same time, and we make it through to Q3. 
It was starting to look like we were going to get a second round lockout. Unfortunately, the Red Bulls had other ideas and we were very, very quickly humbled. We're going to go back to fuel saving because I do feel there's going to be a couple of incidents in the races and we can truly benefit from it. We're going to be pushing Stroll most of the race and Alonso's just going to chill. Hopefully the one-stop strategy for this going on means that we can do a very late strategy call if needed with incidents. After the dust has settled, I'm hoping, hoping for at least a double points finish. Let's see what the... Everybody else in the grid has to say about that one. Six laps in and, and although the top two have decided to go off and do their own thing, everyone up to ninth seems to be together in a nice clump. See, this is good for us because we get to stay with the top, but also at the same time, Sonoda is the driver which is also a part of this convoy at the moment. We cannot afford for anybody from RB getting any more points than us at this point in time. However, with this DRS train started to slowly dissipate into its own separate groups with Fernando on softer tyres, we made the call to swap the teammates over. Fortunately, it didn't quite go to plan. I, I try not to use this command as much as possible because I know how hit this it can yep. be. When we hit it this time, Stroll slowed down to such a speed that Norris was able to get through as well. <sighs> On lap 15 it becomes evidently clear that Alonso can't keep up with the top 5 in the pack. We still have Norris behind us at the moment but Stroll is closing in on that group as well. Maybe we should uh, maybe we should actually try and get an undercut sorted, at least planned. Because if we're going to be holding each other up, if we can get one of the Aston Martins out and into clean air, we definitely give ourselves a much better chance of being in front of our rivals when they come out of their first pits. Even more so now that Norris has somehow managed to find his way through. With the undercuts done, it looks like they seem to be working on paper, but everybody else seems to be choosing soft switch with both our drivers and hards. Was this a strategy mistake? Possibly. Alonso on a one stopper, he's pretty much left dead in the water at the moment. Even with lower fuel I don't know how much we're going to be able to defend, defend against anybody catching up to the back of us two cars off. and when you've got so Yuki trying to pass room. you as well that's when we know oh we're possibly the choosing the There's wrong tactics crash. here now we can see what happens uh, hello what's this oh that's quite an impact between them the that teams could will no be. Doubt be very keen to establish the full extent of the damage. That could be a potential freebie. Less than 20 laps to go, those on the softs are finally starting to pit and we get those positions back. Currently in 7th and 8th place. I wouldn't mind finishing in these positions. But let's wait to see if the chaotic Australia Grand Prix curse comes around again. Especially with Alonso so close behind to Sainz, even though it is Leclerc the one that's uh, suffered with damage. So Fernando, we will start more management. Let's see what happened there. Even the bat markers starting to Martin. give us a hand here. Do you feel by? the pace of the Ferrari will get them straight back past us again? But we can hope that there is actually that a big problem with Sainz's car. That unfortunately turned out to be true, as the Ferrari. Once passed, slowly rides off into the sunset. Still low, 7th and 8th place, see if we can keep these two positions. Sonoda going for a late charge out as we approach the end of the race, as Hamilton has a spin out, which ironically happened as well in my arrow save as well. In fact, I think it may have been the same corner. At least this time, he didn't bounce back into the track. Yuki did eventually get past both Stroll and Alonso, however, the medium tyres have started to fade. Alonso on, on the hards has a chance now to, if we can just quickly get him all charged up and prepared, a late blitz onto Yuki and hopefully we can steal that 7th place, which I think will be literally 
Alonso's third, seventh place in a row. With the last lap coming and two DRS zones in a row, as soon as you hit that front stretch, now is the time to hit the buttons and time to let Alonso do his thing. Sorry, Sonoda, but today's just not going to be your day. One more lap, one more lap. Yeah. And now it's time for Alonso to fly. And with the race over, the Aston Martin driver returns to the team. Seventh place at the end of that one, and some points for the team. And no doubt, the staff and fans will be celebrating the Dutchman's achievement. A seventh and a ninth, double points. I am satisfied with the Australian Grand Prix today. No major incidents, no cars getting totaled. And although maybe the strategy wasn't the best for, say, Alonso, we finished just outside a, an absolutely dominant top six. A top six where I feel going to be dominant throughout most of the season. So we just need to be best of the rest. Well, I'll tell you one thing. Can't knock Fernando Alonso's consistency. Three sevenths in a row. Stroll, not so much, did slightly total the car after hitting a stationary object, but it happens to all of us, I suppose. But at the moment, fourth place in the constructors, Mercedes really struggling in the save, and when they finally seem to be at a track that they're good at, RB just seems to be nicking little bits of points from them every now and then. That's fine with me, it means that we will get our third place finish. Surprised at how competitive McLaren are, but they can't get the job done at the end. Kind of like it real life, you know, but um, yeah, good solid save so far. Getting our consistent points in, but like I said right at the start of the save, Japan is where our upgrade should hopefully boost us. A little bit closer to those just, just a little bit too far podium positions but thank you so much for watching let me know in the comments underneath how your saves are going at the moment and i hope you like uh more than one race per per video as this series is going to slowly turn into a weekly upload i figured you know get a few more races per episode that way we can get through the season quite nicely and also a massive thank you to everyone who has been watching the ratings videos as well as tuning into the live streams where after the patch got fixed our Jaguar team is back to being towards the back of the grid but we are slowly building those blocks of designs and researching and hopefully we can start looking at potentially getting some legitimate points this season so check those streams out when you can thumbs up the video subscribe Check out the links underneath, especially for the Twitch stream and Discord. I do have an F1 manager part in my Discord now for you just to throw all your screenshots in, how your team's doing so far, and any questions as well. But I will see you next video. Take care of yourselves. Most importantly, please make sure you take care of each other.